Most importantly, by the way, probably most of you know, my name is Robert Zone. I am the owner with my wife and daughter of Value Electronics. We're a retailer that specializes in premium audio and video, and we're custom integrators, as well as our e-commerce nationwide business. This is such a big upgrade, and then I thought 2021 was the biggest upgrade I've seen in almost a decade, and now we have even a bigger upgrade for 2022. We have bigger screens, we have brighter mini LEDs with much lower black levels. We have fantastic improved processing. We have much larger screens. We have quantum dot OLED. This is the biggest upgrade year I have seen since OLEDs came out in 2013, I believe it was. Nice to see you, everybody. I am Caleb Dennison, uh, editor at large at Digital Trends. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Master of ceremonies. Don't know what that means. Um, no, I, I'm kidding. I hope to keep things kind of moving it along. And also, I just want to say hey to everybody who is uh, watching the live stream. What's up? Uh, there are quite a few people, and thanks to Spare Change for uh, running the live stream. Uh, folks all over the place, the public is not allowed into this event. Uh, you know, we want to keep things as safe as we possibly can, but uh, the world is watching right now. I'm gonna introduce the calibration team in just a moment. Panel of expert judges. First, uh, David McKenzie is here. He's a compressionist uh, with Fidelity in Motion, and uh, he is on the panel. We have David Medina, Production Technical Operations Manager at HBO. Uh, Dwayne Davis, who does get the award for most comfortable, as we can see. Uh, calibrator and Display Consultant, Audio Video Fidelity. That's what I should be wearing right now. <laughs> we also have Ed Johnson, Calibrator, Video Enthusiast, and Powerhouse Engineer. Uh, Giles Sherwood, I hope I have that correct. Uh, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing. Director of Post-Production at Criterion. Um, Ilya Akatoshi, Colorist and Digital Imaging Technician. Uh, Jason Dustel, ISF Instructor and Training at Meridio. Um, Jason is also um, part of the calibration team and will be speaking in just a moment. Big ups to Jason. Uh, Jeff Hagerman, Digital Imaging Technician. John Reformato, engineer and ISF3 calibrator. John will also be speaking in just a moment. And uh, Kenneth Almestica, senior di technical director at Viacom. And I also just want to make a special mention to thanks uh, to Metra for the cables to connect all of our AV displays, and AV Pro and Meridio for the distribution equipment. Hello, folks. Uh, my name is John Reformato. And um, this year is going to be really interesting because it's different than other years. We have a really experienced calibration team, which I'm going to introduce in a second. Um, tremendous amount of experience. We've combined and took the best processes that each of us have been using over the, over the years, especially um, you see some of the processes that Dwayne Davis has been using. We've implemented a lot of that. and. Um, we're going to get the very best. You're going to see the very best that any of these TVs could be this year. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. This is always fun. Um, I started off in this business as an enthusiast, listening to my dad's Surin Vega two-channel system as a young kid, and it, it's just really stuck with me. Um, we're using our signal generators to get the test patterns on the screen. Uh, from AV Pro Edge, my really good friends over there, we're using a, a matrix switch. We've got a bunch of 8K stuff. Hi. <laughs> This is probably what, Robert, my ninth sh uh, shootout from the years or whatever, but for me, this is the most accurate I've seen of, of host of displays ever in my actual involvement in this actual shootout. So, uh, but uh, just to move on, uh, I would like to say that uh, what we did was we used the best equipment available for us to do these uh, displays. We used the Colorimentary Research CR 300 Spectro, which is a two nanometer, it's pretty much the reference and de facto one used for Hollywood post-production houses calibrations. Um, it's great for these displays with quantum dot with the spiky um, SPDs on them. So if you don't have one, please find one and <laughs> get one. Um, we also did a perceptual match on every single display to the BVM um, to ensure that all colors are as close as possible uh, perceptually to the actual BVM. Um, let's talk about what we have up here. Um, so somebody, uh, the Sony BVM 310. Um, so let's talk about the TVs that are here. We have the Samsung S95B. 
um, OLED television based on Samsung Display's uh, QD OLED technology. We also have the Sony A95K uh, QD OLED. Uh, as referenced before, the reference monitor. Here we have the LG G2. Um, and then if I'm not mistaken, this is the Sony X95K. And then at the far end, the Samsung QN95B. All right, so we are gonna start with motion slash DSE. And for those not familiar, again, dirty screen effect, you would see uh, any discrepancies in the screen. Uh, what you should see is a very consistent uniform white across the screen. Uh, you don't wanna see any dark splotches, patches, lines, bands, or anything else of the sort. Right, so there's no cap put on uh, how bright these TVs can look um, in SDR. Um, what we're looking for is if they start clipping out any uh, detail, yes, but also we're talking about the, the average picture level here, just how bright does the TV look in SDR. Um, all right, the next category will be upscaling performance. Um, we are in SDR, uh, once again. So we're going to have a, a mix of clips here um, in 480i and I believe 1080i. But the, the point being that they are below the native resolution of the television. So the TV's processing the upscaling engine is going to need to take that information and fill all the pixels that it has, even though it only has information for a fraction of the pixels in the television. And so um, we're going to get a chance to see if there's any big differences between each TV's uh, how the, the TV does, uh, you know, upscaling that content. We're moving on to black level slash shadow detail. So for folks checking out the live stream, uh, this is going to be really tough to see. All right, and so what we're going to be looking for is um, overall black level performance. All right, Jason, I think we're going to move to the next one, which according to the ballot, I believe says... Um, Color accuracy slash skin tones. Uh, skin tone gives us sort of a familiar uh, reference point. Next is going to be motion resolution. Now, just to be clear, we are doing a motion uh, clip in both uh, SDR and HDR since they are different modes. And, you know, Lord knows what could be going on in the background uh, with these modes. We're going to just, for posterity, we're going to do it in both. So we will be scoring motion twice today on the ballots. Um, this will be the final uh, evaluation point for SDR. So no, yeah, just to be clear, their BFI is not engaged uh, because it would it would reduce the the net luminance, um, and so it, it would be possible um, to use BFI to clear things up a little bit, um, but because of the uh, not just the reduced luminance, but also the blinking effect that. Uh, we don't want any seizures. <laughs> yep, not trying to have any seizures up in this uh, in this event. Um, given the time, I just wanted to say hello to our friends from West Coast, Best Coast, uh, on uh, the YouTube uh, streaming live uh, through Spare Changes channel. Not for nothing, but a lot of the commenters have asked if you guys could just sort of dip down a little bit more frequently so they could see the, the TVs. I mean, fair, you know, they're out there. They don't have any control. One more clip, upscaling in SDR, uh, that we're going to do uh, so that we can kind of close out that box on your ballot, and then we'll move on to uh, HDR stuff, uh, where things are going to get real crazy. All right, as I said, moving on to HDR, um, and you know we will see some of the, um, some of the same uh, evaluation categories, uh, once again, in HDR mode. And uh, based on the ballot, I believe we're going to be starting with uh, black level shadow detail. And we're going to get into a piece of real content. And the uh, clip that we're going to use, um, we actually, <laughs> we spent some time figuring out what clip we wanted to use for this section. We landed on a certain section of the Black Panther, uh, which I think does a pretty phenomenal job of, uh, you know, uh, showing where there is some detail in the dark areas to be seen. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, dynamic range is kind of the, the number one goal here, but there shouldn't be so much dynamic range that you're losing detail. So we should get nice deep blacks, lots of dynamic range, but at the same time, we hopefully are not losing any shadow detail. Right. So when we were looking at the test pattern before, uh, looking at um, 
rectangle number 65 as being the first shadow out of black, this is a good example of that. You might have a deep black background, which is actually black, but then the first few shadows in an image might be levels 65, 66, 67. And that's one of the great things also I, I have to say about 10-bit. There's a lot more granularity on that bottom end than in SDR. In SDR, when you're dealing with 8-bit, you have 16 at black, and then 17 is your first shadow. It falls off a cliff. Right? right, so there's like, there's nothing in between 16 and 17, whereas 64 to 65 to 66, et cetera, et cetera, there's a lot more granularity there. But yeah, we will be moving to uh, peak luminance. Yeah, it's 1,000. I'm pretty sure it's a 1,000 nit pass. Back to Black Panther. So we are now in the color saturation um, slash color volume section. All right, so we are uh, moving into the motion section. This is from the unreleased upcoming Spears and Munsell disc, the 2022 version. It's actually three discs. All of the displays, the sharpness setting is at zero. Uh, the reason for that is to ensure that there's no edge enhancing or additional processing being done on the actual image itself. Another feature also that we did for this is on the Sony's in particular, we've turned reality creation off. Uh, reality cr creation is a sharpener, but at the same time, we found that it's also doing some interaction with colors. So we basically turn those processing features off. And the reason why you don't want them on is because you're enhancing the image and this, and let's just be honest, all of this that we're seeing, to be honest with you, is art. You know, video is art and we want to see it as close as possible to the, what the artist wanted us to see. So uh, that's why we turn uh, all of that type of processing off. All right, and then there were two, two more categories to go. The next, which I think will possibly be a fan favorite, is the high APL. Yeah, just to be clear, for folks who are watching on YouTube, we're at, the, uh, we're at a high P APL, average picture level uh, test scene here, but the influence of ABL, automatic brightness limiter, on... Uh, some OLED products can come into play when we're pausing a scene like this and just basically letting the TV know we're gonna be sitting and hanging out here like this for a long time. It's gonna to start to take action, protective action, and uh, dim the brightness a bit over time. But you know, this is the last, last bit of element uh, for adjudication on the 4K day of the Value Electronics King of TV shootout for 2022. So as a reminder, um, we started out with SDR day mode, uh, where we talked about motion DSE, peak lumens, and upscaling performance. Um, coming in in third place, oh, I, I should also mention that this was the only place where we saw any real meaningful variance uh, between, say, second and third place. Um, everything else was insanely tight, as you're about to find out. So. <laughs> So in SDR day mode, uh, coming in third place uh, with an average score of 6.7 was the LG OLED G2. Coming in uh, second place with an average of 8.3 was the Samsung S95B. And coming in first place for SDR day mode was the Sony X, uh, A95K uh, at 9.3. Moving on to SDR reference mode, uh, coming in uh, third place, this is where things get really tight, with an 8.2 average was the Samsung S95B. Coming in second place with an 8.5 average was the LG G2. And narrowly achieving a win in the SDR reference mode section was the Sony A95K with an 8.6. So a 0.1 difference. Uh, between the A95K and the G2 in SDR reference mode. And the Samsung was an 8.2 average across those three considerations. All right, getting to HDR reference mode. Um, coming in uh, tied for second uh, with an 8.4, tied for second, was the Samsung S95B and the LG G2 at 8.4. Um, another narrow victory at 8.8 .8 was the Sony A95K. Uh, that means um, that uh, coming overall with an average of all of the scores, 
Uh, in third place, at 7.9, was the LG G2. In second place, uh, with an 8.3, is the Samsung S95B. And that means that the 2022 King of TV award goes to the Sony A95K with a total win of 8.9. Did that include the HDR reference? Yes, that's what I just read. Oh, okay. So congratulations to Sony. Very good. Yep, I, I did want to get to that. So for the LCD TVs, um, first of all, they did not trail very far behind uh, the uh, LG G2. Um, with a uh, 7.5, you had the Sony X95K. And with a 7.4, you had the Samsung QN95B. Uh, so if we were to uh, go from the bottom up, it was the Samsung S90 or QN95B at 7.4. Uh, at 7.5, the Sony X95K, then the LG was 7.9, LG G2, uh, then the uh, Samsung S95B 8.3, and the Sony at 8.9. So for today, we are crowning the new king of 4K TV to Sony for the A95K Master Series. The Master Series. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next year on the next year's TV Shootout.